Here we have an arithmetic expression, and we want to simplify to solve as best as we can. The expression is 2 times bracket quantity 8 minus 3 plus 6 times bracket 2 close bracket minus 3. So it's just a bit of a messy arithmetic expression. We're going to simplify it down as much as possible using the order of operations and see what it equals. So we need to remember PEMDAS, so we need to start with our, our brackets and our parentheses here, simplify down there, and then we can start to add and subtract. So if we leave the 2 outside of the bracket, 8 minus 3 becomes 5, plus 6 times 2 becomes 12, minus 3. So we've done the bracket first here, this parenthesis, and we've done 6 times 2, so that takes care of that bracket. Now we can add 5 and 12, so we still have 2 times bracket, 5 plus 12 is 17, minus 3 still. Now finally we can do 2 times 17, 2 times 17 becomes 34, and 34 minus 3 is just 31. And there's our final answer. Here we have an algebraic equation rather an expression that we want to evaluate for different values of x, y, and z, and see what we get. The expression is 4x plus quantity 7 minus z minus 6y. Now if we're given values for x, z, and y, then we can evaluate this expression to some numerical value. We're given x is equal to 2, z is equal to 4, and y is equal to 5. So here we have our values of x, z, and y, so we can just plug in or evaluate for those three values. So here we have 4 times 2 plus 7 minus z is 4, and minus 6 times y, which is 5. Now we can just multiply these out and simplify it a little bit from here. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 7 minus 4 is 3, minus 6 times 5 is 30, and now we can add these, so we have 8 plus 3 is 11, minus 30, and 11 minus 30 is negative 19. And that's our final answer. We have the task of showing that the following equation holds true. The equation reads 3 times a times 4 is equal to a times 4 times 3. So to talk about this, we just need to realize one simple thing. If you have factors or things that are multiplied by each other, you can write those or rewrite those rather in any way that you like, in any order that you like. So since we have the same three factors in both cases, 3, a, and 4, then we know that these are, the same, these are the same expressions on either side of the equation, either side of the equal sign. So what these both come out to be is 4 times 3, which is 12, so they're both equal to 12a. But all you need to remember is that you can rewrite a factor of an expression in any order that you like. Here we have an algebraic equation that we want to solve. The equation is 6 times x plus 4 equals 28. To solve this problem, we want to solve so we have x equals something. To do that, we need to use inverse operations to get rid of these two terms, the, the 4 and the 6. So we have plus 4. The inverse operation of 4 is, sorry, the inverse operation of plus is minus, or the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. So we need to subtract 4 from both sides. So we have minus 4 and minus 4. That gives us just 6x equals 28 minus 4, which is 24. And now we have this 6 times x. So the inverse operation of multiplication, we have multiplication here, the inverse operation of that is division. So we need to divide both sides by 6. So we have multiplication, we need to do the inverse of that, which is division. So 6 over 6 just gives us x, which is what we're looking for. And then we have 24 over 6, and 24 divided by 6 is just 4. So we have our final answer here of x equals 4. 
Okay, here we have a, a regular x, y coordinate, and we're just trying to plot a certain number of uh, uh, ordered pairs here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six ordered pairs, and we want to plot them on here. It's all in the first quadrant, so all of our x and y values are positive. So we can just find each of these uh, in the ordered x, y. So we always say x first and y second. The first one is the origin, the point is zero, zero. So of course, if it's zero, zero, it's right here. Zero, zero. So we always write x comma y. So on the next problem, next point we have three comma two. Three, two is x equals three and y equals two. So we go to the right three and then up two. So that's right about here. Three comma two. Okay, next we have zero four. So x is zero and y is four. So we're on the y axis here. So one, two, three, four. So we're right here, the point zero, four. Uh, fourth, we have three comma six. So x is three again, and now y is six. So we're at the same value of x here, but we're up two points from this one. So we have it at right about here. So that's the point three comma six. And then we have six comma nine. So x is six and y is all the way up here at nine. So we just move straight up from six to about here. So here's the point six comma nine. X is six and y is nine. And lastly, we have the point four zero. So not zero four like this one, but four zero. So y is zero, we're on the x-axis, and we're at the point x equals four. So here we have the point four comma zero. And that's all of them. We have the following inequality. Y plus eight is less than 24. The question for this is simply, is this true if y is a certain value? We're given y is equal to seven, and we wanna know if this inequality is still true. So we have y plus eight is less than 24. What happens if we plug in y is equal to seven? If we just go ahead and evaluate immediately, and we plug in seven here, we have seven plus eight. So now we want to know, is that less than 24? So we say question mark. Seven plus eight is, of course, uh, 7 plus 8 is 15, so we say, yes, 15 is less than 24, so this is true. If y is 7, then this inequality is true, and it works out.